I'm Jen from Reaching Neighbors. I hope everyone's doing great. I have the pleasure of introducing the lovely Cat Lodge. She is a top producing agent at Coldwell Banker, Deanne Harper. With a background in journalism, Cat knows how to ask the right questions, communicate effectively, and negotiate expertly to get the deal done. Cat serves the San Antonio and Texas Hill Country areas. Take it away, Cat. All right, thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. Um, as Jen said, I'm Cat Lodge. I, I work for Cobalt Banker. I'm an individual agent with Cobalt Banker. I work out of their Stone Oak um, North Central office. My degree is in journalism. My background is in communications. I worked in communications before um, uh, real estate. So I'm ready to start my slides because that was actually my first slide. There we go. Um, communicating your way to smooth transactions. I wanted to talk with you all a little today about um, how I speak with my buyers and my sellers, how I talk also with the appraiser. I never don't um, send something to the appraiser when he comes out to appraise my listings. Also, I wanted to talk a little about negotiating with kindness and how to um, get your deals to a smooth closing. That's everyone's goal, you know, in the end. So I wanted to um, first imagine a, a land where there is no buyer agents. It sounds like a magical land because could you even imagine what our transactions would be like with no buyer agents, but that land exists. That land is Australia where I'm from. They have absolutely no buyer agents. It's all just listing agents. They also have really gigantic yard signs, um, which I don't think is gonna take off here in San Antonio, but as an aside, um, because we have buyer agents on the other side, we have a new coworker multiple times a month 30 days at a time and you know that's difficult so um, it's important to have good communication with the person on the other side of the transaction. I'm going to talk first a little about how I communicate with other agents. Um, I have found that agents who are kind first and foremost and have great communication skills they always lead to a smooth transaction in the end. Um, you know if you, if you work from a mindset of abundance instead of scarcity know that there's plenty of work for everyone in town there is 14,000 of us but you know we're working towards a common goal getting our clients to closing just just know that there um there's plenty of plenty of work for everyone we're not competing um also I, I i do try and be kind to everyone in the transaction but kindness is not a weakness i like this quote we must not mistake kindness for weakness kindness isn't weak kindness is a certain type of strength so I, I never lose my cool when I'm talking with other agents. I, I, have, I have a different strategy, which is I go quiet, I listen, and then I call them back and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to call you back in a couple of minutes. But pick up the phone, have conversations with people, that really does um, save the deal. You know, our, our most crucial time for when we're talking with um, the agent on the other side is during our repair negotiations. I remember when I started out as a, a, a new agent, I sent uh, an experienced agent a giant list of repair requests and one minute later my phone was ringing she said okay Kat we're going to go through this item by item I want to speak with you first about what your client's deal breaker items are because I want your buyer to be happy and um, that's kind of how I how I, I communicate with the other listing agent too this um, this slide makes me laugh because sometimes there literally is no saving the deal we've all felt it um, but you know this is like a live shot of an agent realizing they're not going to save the deal. So sometimes, yeah, the deal does implode, but if you, you know, hold your head up high, treat everyone with respect and kindness, just know you're probably going to run into that agent on the other side again on another transaction. They might have the listing that your client wants and it's a multiple offer situation. So I always just never burn bridges. It's my advice. Um, I, I did a couple of years ago do a, a course Ninja Selling. So if there's anything you learned from today, um, Read this book, Ninja Selling, Subtle Skills, Big Results by Larry Kendall. It is really transformative in, in how you're gonna work with your buyers and your sellers. Um, it talks a lot about um, you know, building relationships long-term with your clients, so you have a client for life, but also gives you little nuggets of information I'm gonna share about how to speak with people effectively. I have a couple of questions I, I always um, ask my buyers right from the start. I set expectations early with them. I like to tell them straight up, look, there is no 100% perfect house. What we are looking for is your 85% perfect house. If we can find that house that hits 85% of the things that you're looking for, you are going to be happy in that home. Um, if they still want a perfect house, I start talking about building from the ground up. But yeah, the 85% perfect house will take the pressure off them of finding their perfect home and they'll just find something that's great. I like to set sales price expectations too, right from the get go. This is a sentence I like to use that's true. Um, so far in 2020, houses in San Antonio are selling on average at 98% of list price. 
Um, sometimes they won't believe you when you say that, but if you can go into MLS, you run a market statistics report, you're going to be able to show them that that's actually true. And that is true. 98% of list price. So there, there aren't too many bargains to be had and you may find yourself in a multiple offer situation. Repair negotiation expectations with your buyers. I like to set, to set that up um, from the start too. When we're at a home that I feel like might be the one for them, I'm going to go looking uh, at, at the systems of the house. I don't want them to have big surprises for um, when the inspection report comes in. So I want to know, I want to see age of HVAC, um, hot water, uh, water heater, all that kind of stuff. Um, I also like to tell them it is, is entirely unrealistic to ask a seller to replace a working system just because it's old. So if everyone had that conversation with their clients, we'd save so many deals, I feel like. Now, shifting to talking to your sellers, I have two questions that I got from um, Ninja Selling that really helped me um, talk with my, my seller clients. I like to ask them, tell me about your last real estate transaction. What did you like uh, about it? And what would you change? I also ask them, and it sounds hokey, but it works. If you could wave a magic wand and have this sale go just the way you want it, what would that look like to you? You're going to find out a lot about your clients just from those two questions. I always call my sellers with important news. I, I really don't text them and email them with important stuff because you lose so much of the context and the, and the tone in a text and an email that you don't hear over the phone with them. I like to prep them also from day one for our repair negotiations, what that's going to look like. And I let them know, look, even if your home feels perfect, the inspector is going to find something. We may end up with a list of long repair requests, but I let them know. I, I will probably know what those deal breaker items will be for that buyer because I'll have talked to the, to the um, buyer agent already. Communicating with the appraiser is so vital. And I feel like there's probably a lot of agents that don't even touch it, but I never leave the appraisal to chance. The chance, I always have my appraisal packet ready. I like to send them an email to the appraiser with my comps. And I say, here are my comps. I hope um, I used to help me price this home. I really appreciate your work on this one. And sometimes I'll say, I understand you guys are really busy. Um, here's, here, here are the comps I ran. Um, I, I specifically show them that I know how to run comps and make GLA adjustments. That's gross living area adjustments at bare minimum. If you don't know what that is and you're a newer agent, take a um, PSA pricing strategy advisor course online. I always, when it's multiple offers and over asking, this is my biggest piece of advice for everyone that really works. I attach the first page of each offer that I received to prove to the appraiser that I actually, yeah, I actually had eight offers on this house and I've never touched wood, had a, a, a home that was um, over asking with multiple offers ever come in low. So touch wood. But I think that one really, really helps. And hopefully if you take anything from today, it would be to attach the front page of each offer to your um, email to the appraiser. So thanks to uh, Platinum Top 50 and everyone for listening to me right along for seven and a half minutes.